go. been here to ski for many many years and this was the first song I ever heard when I was learning to ski in 1970 blood sweat and tears and when I die Woo! it gives me chills it gives me chills I remember the first song that I used to listen to blood sweat and tears and when I die the times have a change, the times are changing. Skis have gotten a lot shorter. Check this out. These are my 174s. I used to ski on 203s and 207s. 223 for downhill. So these are 174s. These skis, there's no difference between the left and the right. So this is all new to me. Look at these tips. These are not like the tips I used to use. But Rosignol is the brand that I love. I'm ready. Last run. Last run of the season. Okay, well thank you very much. It's been excellent. Alright man. Cheers. You have a good start. See you next year. This thing's flying. This is like a ride at Disneyland. Oh my goodness. 
This is called a chairlift. Grand Junction, Colorado. Larry Capetto. I used to ski for the United States Ski Association, which is short for USSA. And you gain points, and the top skiers would be trying to make the this U.S. ski team, which I never did. But that was my goal. I had those ambitions. That was my motivation. So I would ski over 100 times a year. I would race. We would play soccer to, to get ready for skiing. And I loved it all. Um, those pictures that I have of myself skiing, I'm very fond of. I ski raced from 19, probably 73. I think I started in 72 with Buddy Warner, broke my leg. And I got back into, I think, 73, 74. Ski raced to about 1980, 80, 81. Tried to semi pro circuit for a year or half a year, and that was it. So I retired at the ripe old age of about, oh, what was I? See, I'm not good at math. I'll say I was about 23, 24 when I retired from skiing, ski racing. You know, after competing like I did for so long, free skiing just didn't do anything for me, so I pretty much stopped skiing just a few times. I uh, skied here, last, last time I remember skiing here is like 92. Okay, this is run number two, I'm gonna let the camera roll. Okay, we're going up the big lift. This is it. How are you? Good. It's good. It's good. Boy, the memories are rolling now, folks. The, mem the memories are rolling now. Larry Capetto, Pidlehorn. This lift is cooking, man. You get more ski time in. This lift never used to move this fast. This is a quad now. Four. One, two, three, four. I got my Rosignol skis, which thrills me because I used to ski with Rosignols when I raced. I got Rosignol poles. I think the boots are Rosignol if they make boots too, but I'm having a blast. Okay, let's hope I do good with the altitude here. I did take my scarf off, so I might feel that around my neck, but that's okay. I'm excited. The base is about 8,200 feet, by the way, and the top of this lift is about 10,000 feet, so. From the beaches of Mexico to the mountains of Colorado, man. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere. Across the deserts bare, man. I breathe the mountain air. Getting ready to get off here, so camera is on. Boy, this lift is just cooking. That's the way it works. I used to race on Racer's Edge. Well, we're going to go off over here. This is like deja vu, memory city, everything. Okay, we're going to capture this. First time down in many years. I used to ski. Maverick, Equalizer, Sidewinder, which is now Bill's Run, was my favorite. We're gonna GoPro. We're gonna GoPro it. It's been a long time since I rock and roll. Uh -huh. Larry Capetto. 
You're watching Larry TV from Potterhorn Ski Area. Watching Larry TV. <laughs> Larry TV. Thank you. We did it. She said it. I like that. Okay, here we go again. Run number two. This will be my last run. What a blessing today. Praise the Lord. Oh, it's good to be back on the slopes. And feeling pretty good, so I'll be sore in my legs, but I'm just so thankful for this opportunity and overcame some fears today. Gonna get off one more time and take one more run. watching Larry TV. Wow.
April 3rd, 2016. Feels like summer ski camp. Potterhorn up on Grand Mesa. I got my new outfit. Well, I don't usually wear this coat when I ski. This is my Hollister coat. Here's my old hat in case I get cold up on top. I'm at the base of Potterhorn. It's about almost 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm going to ski for three hours. I'm going to take some more video. I'm going to do some music and have fun. I'm going to give you a little more of my ski story. And I've got some 184 Dynastars here. They're skis that were recommended based on my concerns the other day with the short skis. Now, I'll explain the difference between a, a, a what's called straight skis and shaped skis. There's a difference. And the, and the way you ski a straight ski, the way I used to ski, is different than these. That's why I felt like everything was squirrely the other day. I'm going to get these skis on. The bindings were set. These are my old poles. And I'm fortunate to have my old ski boots here, my old Lang ski boots. They were the choice of the U.S. ski team back when I was skiing. I've got my Canada hat on. Whoops. I got my Canada hat on too, so I'm going to have a good day. So let's get the skis on. Like I said, it doesn't matter which is left or right unless you're superstitious. So actually, these say 183 centimeters. 20 centimeters shorter than what I used to do. What do you say we give it a try?
Are we rolling? Roll, roll on to. You got to do that every time. What? Yeah. Do you really? I just saw this once. No. Thank you. I'm watching Larry TV. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good day. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Last day, huh? Yeah. Okay, on the lift again. Okay, dudes. Everybody's in a good mood today. Roll on too. I got my hat because in case it gets cold, I'll put it on my head. Hopefully it doesn't look too bad. Well, I talked about breaking my leg. I actually broke my leg down over there. Down there. I came down here and in 1972, Forget the name of that, maybe Lower Peacemaker or something, or I don't remember the name of the hill, but I was, like I said, I was watching the 72 Winter Olympics from Sapporo, Japan, and I, I was 15 years old and invincible, man, and wasn't that great of a skier, and I fell and I caught that edge and broke my leg, this right leg. I broke the tibia and the fibia, boot top fracture, right there. Eight, 12 weeks in the cast, like I said. And uh, I swore I'd never ski after that, but obviously I did. I started ski racing with Buddy Werner League and then went to USSA. Did that for five or six years, probably six years. Like I said, all my money went to skiing. Skiing was everything. I don't know how my, how my mom had patience with all that, but she did. So I was still living at home. But those are good days, glory days. You know, coming back up here, um, very reflective about everything in life now, but especially about skiing. And uh, it's almost like I never left. <laughs> Smells like beer in there. Jeez, people drinking and skiing. Come on. I'm down to my last bottle of water. But it's okay. It's alright. Take it easy, baby. Make it last all night. I don't want to lose my little furry friend here. I feel like I got a, a gerbil in my my coat. Gerbil. Yeah. There's gerbils up here. Okay, run number three, Larry Capetto, Powderhorn, 10,000 feet. Reflecting, reminiscing, sentimental, deja vu. Let's go. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I've got that beautiful feeling. Everything's going my way. Woo! Line. Did it 
are you cross country skiing? All right. No, they're skate skis. Are they? They're AT skis. Very cool. Yeah, let's get down the bottom. So how far are you going? Just a lift. All right. You must be in good shape. Oh, she's got skate skis? What was that? I said, what? You said, what? Oh, baby, you know what I got. Chantilly lace and a pretty face, a ponytail hanging down, a wiggle in your walk and a giggle in your the world go round. Ain't nothing in the world like a big eyed girl to make me act so funny, make me spend my money, make me feel real good like a long neck goose. All right. Oh, baby, that's what I like. Oh, come on, baby. Whole lot of shake going on. Very reflective today. I was thinking, I, when I was skiing, that's all I did for seven years. I didn't do any high school sports. Um, I skied. That's all my money went to skiing. I'm back. I skied many years into the early 80s and then I retired. If you haven't made it when you're 21 in ski racing, you're old. So I found myself old and retired without a job. But man, I wouldn't trade those days for anything. And being up here, feeling the freedom I used to have and the thrill, the exhilaration when I'm skiing, you can't beat it. I feel the same way on the beach or the ocean. Right now it's very peaceful and tranquil. I feel like I'm the only one up here. Snow is really soft. You see that? It's it's definitely spring skiing full on. Two days ago it wasn't like this. Reminds me of summer skiing in Wyoming. I go to ski camps in Wyoming in June. I'd ski at Grand Targhee, which is up in the Tetons. Oh, there's a guy that just went down. Paul. There you go. You did it, dude. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. You're watching Larry TV. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you, sir. You too. Well, I got my GoPro here. Cool. You want to say something you never said before? No. You don't want to say it? Uh -huh. Okay, I won't make you say it. Hey, I broke my leg here in 72. Did you? Yep. Both, bo Both bones. Oh, it's fine. Thank you. Did, Paul didn't want to say you're watching Larry TV, but he's a ski patrolman. All right, I think I got him on video, so. He's gonna be on Larry TV. Get a little speed going here, talking to you. Don't leave me now. It's a good video. It's a little steep there. in the legs. I want to meet some interesting people. Bring me some interesting people, Lord, for the rest of my video, okay? Watch this video. I want you to feel like you're right here with me. One more run for the Gipper. Hi. What up, buddy? How you guys doing? You killing it or what? I'm about had it. Last run. This is it, last run of the season. Okay, well thank you very much. Excellent. Alright man. Cheers. You have a good summer. See you next year. been worth it man if the cause is great enough it's worth the effort so one last run one last run at Powderhorn
And I'm hungry and I'm tired. But it's a good tired, if you know what I mean. I won't say never again. I probably will ski again now that I've done it again. Maybe, it would definitely be a spring skiing. I'm not a cold weather skier anymore, that's for sure. I can smell marijuana, those guys up there are smoking it. They're, they actually parked down by me. Kind of a sick smell right now, but they're flying high. Probably about halfway up. I'm speaking closer to the camera because there's a little bit of wind and if we're not breathe too hard, I'll breathe some of that marijuana smoke. Uh-uh. This view is incredible, isn't it? Breathtaking, just like the ocean. I'm really pretty tired. <sighs> this is called Potter Keg. Potter Keg underneath the lift. That's Yahoo. Way before we had Yahoo, I just thought about that. Huh. Time to start mowing the grass. Ski season's over here today. I'm one of the last people down, probably. It's 4.35 Mountain Time, April 3rd, 2016. Enjoyed my hat today. My little furry friend here. These skis have done well. It's very wet out there, so you gotta be real careful, but these skis have really done well. About, about ready to get off. I think that's enough taping for now, so I'm gonna give a salute. Praise the Lord for this day. Thank you, Lord, for safety, health, and uh, we'll be back. So with that, I'm gonna say so long. I'll probably take some video at the bottom. Okay. Isaac, Borden Buckle. Right. Years and years and years ago, I was a ski racer. Yeah. I guess once a ski racer, always a ski racer. Well, at least you never learn how to, or forget how to ski. That's the best part about it. You don't forget. Time. That's don't the forget. thing. Yeah. It's still, and yeah, the body's a little bit older, but the mind's still the body's sharp. a lot older. Yeah, but it's good to see you. I was telling Bob I rented some skis from Borden Buckle, and uh, haven't seen him in as many years as I haven't skied. But you, look, you, look, I, you, I recognize you right away, so you, you look great. I'm just older and wiser and grayer. 
<laughs> you, you look good, but I do. Yeah. I'm a musician. I do stuff, but when I travel a lot, I do a lot of traveling. I, I always okay. go. I always go up to people and ask them and t ask them if they'd say you're watching Larry TV into the camera. Could you do that for me? Yeah. Say, when I say, just say you're, just look in here and say, and you're Nicole, right? Yes. Say you're watching Larry TV. Okay. Go ahead. You're watching Larry TV. Now that's something you've never said before, right? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> the cool vintage boots. Did you like them? Yeah, though I haven't seen those boots like that in forever. Well, I um, uh, I had fun with them. They work great. Right, so, right. That's all that matters. Yeah, and they to me they just are ageless, timeless. It's like you know. So you know, you're going like this at about 50, 60 miles an hour. You know, you got your tuck going, got your helmet on, your ski suit on, and then I caught an edge. And I fell, and I had old Miller bindings, and I broke this leg in two places, spiral fracture, tibia and fibula. Okay. I want to thank you guys. M Melanie, right? Yeah. Nick. I talked to you on the phone. Yep. yep. Kyle. All right. Well, you guys were great, and uh, I did this with Bob, too, so it's like, uh, but the, the ski was great, and I'll remember that, and you, you helped make my day. Awesome. So, awesome. Awesome. I mean, you, thank you, man. The, the customer service here is fantastic, cool. but awesome. don't have a second chance to make a first impression, so that was good. Thank you. <laughs> okay. okay. Cool. You're watching Larry TV. How you doing today? Good. Right on.